What are we doing today though, Mom? We've um, got something special going on today. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Something really exciting happened to our family this week that we want to share with you. And it fits uh, into a passage of scripture that I love. And also lets me tell you a Barney story. Who's Barney? You have to stay tuned to find out. So are you ready to get another dog? I think so, yes. So we're looking at adopting a new dog, not a puppy, it's about a year and a half old and uh, we'll, we'll see. Growing up I had a dog uh, from right, right from the beginning and I think as Mary we've only had a short stint, maybe seven years where we didn't have a dog when we were renting. And, couldn't sneak one in so <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't allow us so um, so what what was your first dog um, the very first dog I had his name was Laddie and um, Laddie and then I had my sister's dog had a puppy and I got one of her puppies and his name was Jamie and then you had a dog that was great with Jamie Jamie's yep. counterpart. Yeah, what was Jamie? Jamie was a mutt. <laughs> a mutt, same kind of, my dog Barney, we grew up with dogs, we, of course we had a little um, chihuahua for a while and uh, when I got old enough we went and got a dog, it was uh, a mix to mostly beagle, but he had like jackrabbit and greyhound and everything else in it. So. <laughs> This, uh, this dog, he was a great dog. And when we got married in Houston, we had to leave both Jamie and Barney there in Houston with a lady who, who adopted them and took in dogs because I was going to Bible college and we were gonna be in an apartment and could not bring the dogs with us. And that was a hard thing to do right before we left. I think, I think we cried about the first hundred miles yeah, <laughs> leaving Houston yeah. coming to California and then what and, happened well this cute little <laughs> black puppy black, she's a retriever mix of some kind um, just kind of wandered into the neighborhood yeah and, and we opened the door and she just came in yeah I think there's food involved <laughs> with that, that somebody put out some food and this dog we didn't leave. It was a, it was a cute dog and nobody, uh, you know, was looking for this dog and so I had no collar, no identification, no chip. And so that was midnight. That was uh, like a black lab retriever mix. So we had that dog um, for quite some time. Moved back to Albuquerque and uh, rented where, without a dog a little bit and then ended up getting uh, another dog that we went and adopted and the kids went along with us to do that but she couldn't she was at work at the time so we were sending her text and video of all these puppies at the Animal Humane Society you know what do you like what, what do you you know what do you want and she's trying to do her job right not get in trouble and <laughs> you're getting all these I was little... getting all these text messages and the, the fun thing was the the, uh, I was sitting in a table of, of seniors because I worked at a senior um, housing place and they were all excited with me because I kept showing them the pictures of <laughs> all the puppies that they were looking at. So they thought that was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, so we all kind of decided on this. Uh, it was part shepherd Labrador mix, um, very much uh, shepherd dominant that uh, we brought home and our daughter Carissa named her Shelby. Yeah. And so Shelby was a part of our family for about 11 years. She would nip at our heels and shepherd us around the house. It was so <laughs> hilarious, so funny. Got her as about six weeks uh, to eight weeks old, somewhere around there, I think. And then... Uh, Don't even try to put a pair of slippers on around Shelby when she was a puppy. Oh my gosh, she did not like slippers. <laughs> She'd go after you and so it's been about a year since we had to put Shelby down and that was you know it's one of those hard things to do they become part of your family and uh, you have them for a decade you know feed and 
love on this dog. It was a great dog. Just really did everything that I wanted to protect the house and and was just a got house trained like in two days and then hardly had any problems after that. It was just so amazing. This dog was you know just super dog in that aspect. But it's kind of time we've been thinking about getting another dog and um, I got a dog story that I want to tell you that fits in with scripture so we're not just saying this and, and vlogging about getting dogs but I think it teaches us an awesome truth about scripture about Christ and the love of God and so I want to talk about that so are you excited about this dog or yeah I am I'm real excited um, I feel like this is something that God is doing um, now we're gonna go and meet her today and make sure that she's a good fit for us and yeah. we're a good fit for her we, we need to find out whether she's um, a little bit too rambunctious for us in our older age you know um, but we're gonna go meet her and see <laughs> um, but we um, but I feel like you know we have a wonderful awesome Heavenly Father and he loves doing things for his children just like we do and I know as a mom I always wanted to do things to surprise my kids to um, it give them excitement but they didn't know what was going on and I think that if we're created in the image of God how much more yeah. does God want to do good things and this I think was a true God thing we'll see we'll see how, if she fits with us or not but it feels to me like this is something that God is doing and yep. so we're excited. Yep. We'll see and uh, we weren't planning on it necessarily we were putting it off and uh, so this opportunity came up to get this, uh, pop, possibly get this dog. It's a uh, uh, Aussie Doodle, so it's an Australian Shepherd with a uh, Poodle mix. Supposedly they're supposed to be really smart dogs, so if he doesn't have, you know, like bifocals on, you know, with a pipe in his mouth, I, I, I may question that. We'll see. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun, so we'll see. We're kind of both excited to get a dog back in the house and um, have a dog that would maybe uh, run around with Carissa's dog and so little uh, Addie, I, I call her Attitude, but uh, she's a cute little dog and you've seen her, you'll see her on the show later on and stuff. So anyways, it, I guess we'll go check it out at the park and we'll take you along with us and as we see this and we'll, we'll find out is this a match made in heaven. <laughs> So what passage of scripture fits with the Barney story? It's in Ephesians chapter 2, but I'll need my Bible. Bible assistant. <laughs> okay, we're going to read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. It says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So this passage is talking about our relationship with God. Before we come to know him, we have no relationship with him. Matter of fact, the scripture describes us as being dead to him, which means we're separated. This doesn't mean that we can't seek him or that we didn't have a concept of God. And because the person writing this is Paul the Apostle. Paul, before he got saved, thought he was serving God. He was persecuting the church in the name of God. He knew the scriptures. And Paul had a what he thought was a relationship with God but he didn't until Jesus met him on the Damascus Road right and he got saved and he understood this concept that he was separated from God there's actually a scripture that talks about this in Isaiah 59 2 and so I'm gonna read that Isaiah 59 2 but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. 
So in that passage, it teaches us that dead in sin means that we've been separated from Christ because of our rebellion to him. We have no relationship with him. And it goes on to say that, matter of fact, we're afflicted with sin, not only from Satan, but also the world and our own flesh. It calls him the prince of the power of the air, the one who's kind of controlling things that are going on around us. You could kind of say, back in our day, we would say like the MTV spirit. MTV, you might have to Google it and figure it out now. But it's the idea of this kind of prevailing rebellion against God that permeates the world. So not only are we getting hindered and pulled away by Satan and his deceptive means, but also because of what's going on in the world and other people, and then our own inner nature that is in rebellion to God. And because of that, we were objects of wrath. I mean, we were due the penalty of sin. We were gonna get what we deserved. Honestly, for all the sins we've had in our life, when you understand what sin is, we had great grievances against God. Some of us, incredible amounts of sin against him. Others, uh, we might think not as much, but when you add up day after day, year after year, incredible sins against the eternal God. And we deserve the punishment that was coming our way. So we're justly condemned, objects of wrath. Wow, an object of wrath is like kindling that's in the storage bin right next to the fireplace that is just waiting to be the next one placed in the fire. It meant that here comes that punishment. It's inevitable. You're the next one going in and it's an object waiting for destruction. And that's what fire does. It destroys. It completely wipes away all elements that were there and you're just left with ash. And that's what our lives would have been had we rebelled constantly against God and not given in to him. So let's go into Ephesians a little bit more. We're gonna read verses four through seven. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Man, those passages are awesome. When you break them down, it shows his love for us. It's a perfect love that he comes to us. His grace made us alive when we were dead in sins when we were dead in trespasses, when we had no relationship with them, he reached down and came to us to restore the relationship that we ruined, basically. Do you understand what these passages are saying? It's awesome. It's talking about that by his grace or his love, he intervened when we were dead, dead in trespasses and sins, and made us alive. Now the opposite of not having a relationship is having the relationship. So it's God himself that's reaching out to us and making a relationship with us, making us alive unto him, knowing him, knowing about him, and then to protect us and guide us in this relationship. When it says that he raises us up, it's also talking about the promise of eternal life not just eternal life in misery or in hurt or ah, my arthritis or man, I can't see, and, but with an eternal body, a body that is immortal, that is not fueled by the terrestrial, by the earthly, but fueled by the celestial, by the heavenly. In other words, it's spirit-led and spirit-fueled body that will be without pain and he's given us that. But think about this. 
If that was it, if that was all he gave us, man, we should be praising him for that, right? But he gave us so much more. It says he seated us in heavenly places. This is like the king who comes to you and says, or to the peasant and says, hey, come live in my mansion. Come live in my castle. Come live and partake of all the goodness that I have. Everything that I have is yours. You'd be like, what? Or what, what, right? Because it is so good. We're seated with him in heavenly places, which means we have access not only to him, but all of his goodness and all of the things that he created for us that he wants to bestow upon us and grant us. And it's mind blowing when you think about it. Someday we'll do a study on heaven and it'll blow you away. But that's not the only thing that's left there. He's promised to love us, to be with us, to never leave us or forsake us. Man, when you think about that, and you think about God, and you think about his love, and when you think about the person that you just really wanna be with all the time, he's so much more maximally better than they are, no matter how good they are, or how awesome they are, or how much they may love you, he loves you so much more. If he's going to be with you this whole time and never leave you or forsake you, it's something that really is a blessing. It's powerful. It's motivating. I remember getting to meet Dr. A.E. Wilder Smith. He's passed on now. And uh, the time we got to meet him, uh, he was only there for a short time, a couple days. And I found out that he loved strawberries and cream. So I wanted to spend as much time with them as I could. So another pastor friend and I took him to dinner because the, that next morning he was leaving early in the morning and he was getting up in age at this time. And so we wanted to have as much time with him as possible. This guy had four earned doctorates and he was amazing to talk to, talking about event horizons, angels, theology, evolution versus creationism. He was just so incredibly smart and we just wanted to spend every minute with him. So we took him to a restaurant that we knew had endless strawberries and cream because he loved it. Because we could keep him talking when we would tell him, hey, do you want some more strawberries? Hey, it's endless. Hey, it's free. And his wife kept saying, honey, honey, I think you've had enough. And he's like, oh, I think I want more. And we're like, yes because we got to spend time with them, just picking his brain. How much more God, think about that. Man, God has blessed us with so much. The scripture and passage continues and it says this in Ephesians 2. So we're gonna go in Ephesians 2, eight through 10 and it says this. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So those passages give us two important things we need to know. The first is that salvation is a gift bestowed upon us when we operate in faith. Faith is not notorious. In other words, it's not something that is a work or something that we are owed for if we uh, exercise it. Faith is basically you saying, I trust you, I can't trust me anymore. Faith is admitting that we can't do it on our own. Faith is basically saying what you have done or what you've done on the cross actually is what I need. And so... I'm putting my trust in your works, no longer in my works. I cannot be righteous enough. Faith is basically coming and understanding that we need to accept that offer of love. And that's the second thing. It's an offer of love. There's nothing in us that would cause God to say, hey, I, I need you. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need us. But God is love. 
and he's perfect love and he's infinite love and he's sacrificial love. And so a sacrificial love, a perfect love like this can't be contained. It always has to be poured out on someone. It's poured out on you. God wants to pour his love out on you. And by faith, we are receiving that, turning away from the things we trusted in, turning away from our sins, trusting in that, trusting in really his work and his love that we don't merit or we don't earn, which reminds me of the Barney story. Finally, we're gonna get to it. Barney was my first dog. Love that dog. He was part beagle, part greyhound, part jackrabbit. This dog was crazy. I love this dog, but he was a mutt. They used to call him a Heinz 57. All kinds of mixes of breeds. You didn't really know what they were. He didn't have papers. When we found him, he was at the dog pound. I know they call it something else, but it was the dog pound. That Back in those days, he was on death row. Being a dog with no pedigree. There was no reason for anybody to love him. There was no reason for anybody to buy him or resell him. There was nothing that he could give them. There's nothing that he could offer. He was just there destined for that needle, destined for that shot, destined for destruction. No hope, nothing to offer. And we went through and we're looking at different dogs and you know, they're barking, barking, barking. You hear the cats in the other area meowing, you know, and a lot of noise and you're walking up and down and you're looking at the dogs and there he was, this beagle mix. And he kind of got up and moved right towards the end. Kind of, I pictured him like behind these bars, you know, grabbing him and he kind of put his head down and he looked up with those little brown eyes, you know, and, and so I thought, Barney, Barney Google with the goo goo googly eyes. And that's when he got me. He was like, ah, oh, I have to have you. I have to rescue you. I have to take you home. And what was going through his mind, his little doggy brain, like, what are these people coming? And I hope somebody comes and rescues me and helps me. And <laughs> we got him and we put him in the car. We took him home. First thing I did was clean him up. I gave him a bath. Just what Jesus does for us, right? He cleans us. We're clean from our sins by the blood of Christ. We're bathed and, and cleansed by his sacrificial work. And then we fed him. And that's what Jesus does. Feed my sheep, right? He tells us about himself. And it's really the words of life. And so this dog got bathed and it got cleaned up, but it didn't stop there. We brushed him and we protected him and he got to roam the whole house. He was part of our family. He was adopted in. He got to go where I went. He got to sleep on the same bed where I was sleeping. And he even got some of my food when sometimes I didn't like that food and it went under the table or sometimes a good food too. He got to run with me, play with me, go camping with me. And he had to think, what did I do? I've died and gone to heaven, man. Uh, I've got it made in the shade. He could sit back in doggy heaven. That's what we have, folks. We were destined for death, objects of wrath. And we had nothing about us that deserved to be saved. Yet Jesus came, saved us, cleaned us, fed us, protected us and then raised us up in heavenly places where we got to occupy the same space. And not only that, we became good friends. He says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends in John 15 because he loved them. Why did I pull in Barney? Because I wanted a dog to love. Why did God pull us in and save us? He wanted you. He wanted to love you. And we have to receive that love. Don't reject it. Receive it. Don't hide from him. Even though, yes, we're sinners and even though we fall short, he wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants you to understand that by the price he paid. And he wants you to enjoy his kingdom. Enjoy the things he has for you. So I think that's, um, 
uh, one of the best Barney stories, but I got three or four more that go along with that that maybe we can get to in future passages. And also, we want to show you a little bit more of our new dog, Molly. Here she is. Hey, Molly. What? We're at the dog park here in uh, Los Altos in Albuquerque, <laughs> playing with the dogs and uh, getting to know this uh, cute little dog, Molly, and she's so respectful already and so attentive and smart that uh, I think this dog's going to do some uh, neat things. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> she's running around. Very rambunctious. A little bit bigger than what I had uh, thought so which is good because I like bigger dogs and uh, we'll see if we can't get this dog uh, rolling with us as uh, part of our household so that's uh, Molly there we got our family here Chris is here just sitting Hey, if you're in the Albuquerque area, we'd like to see you at Cross Christian Fellowship. That's where we lead people to the cross for real life answers. It's real easy to find. We're on Edith Boulevard, just north of Osuna. And we're on the west side in an industrial complex, Suite B. You can get more information at crossfellowship.org. That's crossfellowship.org. Thank you so much for watching Cross Christian Fellowship in Real Life. Our goal is more than just equipping you. We have a goal of planting 100 churches in the next 20 years. To do this, we need your help. We need exposure to reach people with the gospel, reach leaders who need training, reach church planters who need mentorship. We have an online Bible college to equip them. It is high training with low cost ccfcollege.com Here are four ways you can help. Pray for us. Go to our YouTube channel. Search YouTube for Cross Christian Fellowship. Subscribe to the channel. Watch and like our videos. Share our videos on your social media accounts. Support us at patreon.com for as little as $10 a month. Thank you for considering supporting us and being a part of our team.